A.A. Ron. Where is A.A. Ron right now? A.A. Ron here. Happy Wednesday, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we are reacting to South Park's Scientology Trapped in the Closet episode. I've been wanting to do this forever. I don't know why it took me so long, but today we're going to do it. And if you're watching this video on Wednesday, September 28th, it means everything uh, went off without a hitch. And if you're not, it means I got uh, content. I got a content strike by either Comedy Central or HBO Max, and it can take up to a month to get those resolved. So I guess we'll see how it goes. For those new viewers, I was, I was essentially born and raised in Scientology. I was four years old when my mom got involved. So from the age of four to 34, I was uh, in Scientology. And you can also see my story of growing up in Scientology and leaving Scientology on Netflix, on the show Scientology and the Aftermath. On Netflix specifically, my episode is season one, episode seven. On other platforms, it's season one, episode six. I don't know why Netflix changed the order, but they did. So I, I am what you might call an expert on the subject of Scientology. Uh, and also, by the way, I'm now the vice president of the Aftermath Foundation. Uh, we help people who are escaping from Scientology, escaping from the C organization, helping them restart their lives from scratch. So let's jump right into the episode. These guys got so many things right. Let me show you just how right they got so many things. And I'll also comment on some of the things that they didn't get right, probably intentionally. So I think the things that they altered were, were altered for comedy, but uh, let's take a look. Hello, would you like to take a personality test? It's fun and it's free. Excuse me? We're doing free personality tests today. Uh, what do I have to do? Have you heard of Scientology? It's all based on the book Dianetics. A lot of really cool people are Scientologists, like Tom Cruise and John Travolta. Why don't you come on in and we'll get your fun free personality test started. Let's just find an empty room here. Lots of people getting free tests today. Hey, Brian. Hey, Kelly. How's it going? Great. I want you to meet my new friend, Stan. Hey there. How are you? Fine. Brian's going to give you your personality test and then let you know some things about Scientology. Good times. Good times. Look, is this a religion? Because my family is like Catholic or something. Oh, that's not a problem at all. Scientology is more of an alternative to psychology than a religion. Then how come that sign says Church of Scientology? Oh, that's just this thing. What's the Denver Broncos record now? Six and two? Seven and two. Wow, that's great. All right, come on in and take a seat. We're going to have some fun. All right, now I'm just going to ask you a few questions. Just answer these questions as truthfully as you can, all right? Okay. Number one, do you ever make remarks which you later regret? Uh, sure. So these are actual questions on Scientology's personality test except in the real world, it's not something that's administered uh, verbally or with someone else. It's a written test. And the entire purpose of this test is just to use the results as a sales tool. So they're getting, I think we're gonna see that they get that part right. So anyway, they have the essence of this correct, even though it's not a verbal one. Uh-huh. Would you rather give orders than take them? Yeah. Do you ever whistle just for the fun of it? Okay, and finally, does life sometimes feel vague and confusing to you? Yes. Okay, Stan, well, that's it. That's the end of the personality test. So how'd I do? Yeah, I'm afraid that you are completely miserable and totally depressed. I am? I didn't know that. Well, there's certainly no question that you are a perfect candidate for Scientology. I think it can really make you happy again. What do I do? It's very simple. We just need $240. I mean, that's exactly how that goes. They do the test. The test is always interpreted or evaluated in a way that is designed to emphasize things you might be insecure about or whatever. And then it's the actual, the, the, the standard response to every item on the test evaluation once they've uh, get, you know, said the thing to you and you've responded, as long as they've gotten you to agree in some way, they go, um, Scientology can help you with that. <laughs> and then they sell you an introductory course. What? Why? I don't know. Well, how long have you been feeling this? I need $240. $240? What'd you do? Break something? No, I found a self-help program that can cure me. Oh, Jesus. The answer is no, Stanley. Don't you care that I'm depressed? Well, if you really think your life is so bad, Stan, why don't you take what you have out of your bicycle savings? Well, but, but that's my money. You want a bike, or do you want to not be depressed? Michelle, our friend Stan wants to have auditing. 
Oh, good for you. You're going to be so happy. I hope so. It's the beginning of a whole new life for you, Stan. See you afterwards. Great. So do you have the $240? Perfect. We're on our way. Come on over here and I'll fill you in on how the Church of Scientology works. You see, Stan, Scientology was founded by a great man named L. Ron Hubbard. Mr. Hubbard discovered that negative emotions are actually caused by things called body thetans. Really? Yes, and being the genius that he... All right, so let me pause it here. The body thetans concept is something that's only introduced at OT3, which is one of the upper level confidential auditing levels in Scientology. The vast majority of Scientologists never actually even get to OT3. Now, Scientology does call uh, the spiritual being, Scientology believes that we're all immortal spiritual beings, and the word for this spiritual being is Thetan. But body Thetan is a very unique concept that's introduced at OT3 that you have tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of sort of uh, sick, crazy spiritual beings, other Thetans stuck to your body or stuck to you as a Thetan, and that these crazy spiritual beings are the causes of anything that's wrong with you mentally, or physically, or emotionally. And until you get to OT3, science, you don't know that as a Scientologist that that is what L. Ron Hubbard says is wrong with all of us. So anyway, he, they, they get the information right about body Thetans, they just get it wrong that you would find out about it at the introductory levels was, Mr. Hubbard invented a way to get rid of those bad thetans. This is called an e-meter. It's the main tool of Scientology. You just grab hold of these handles as I talk you through past experiences in your life. I'll be taking readings here and we'll be able to determine your thetan levels. Thetan levels. Okay, everything she said about how the e-meter is used there in Scientology auditing was accurate until she said that the e-meter measures Thetan levels. At this point, they're just kind of making things up, and I think it's probably for the purpose of comedy. So anyway, the, the language is just being misused, and um, I think it's probably intentional. Come on in the auditing room, and I'll show you how it works. All right, Stan, I want you to just relax and take hold of the e-meter handles. So this is going to make me happy? They're actually called cans. It's a funny thing. I don't know why they use the word handles. It would have been so much cooler if they said, uh, pick up the cans, because Scientologists would have been like, oh shit, they're using the real language. They would never use the word handles. Just take a few deep breaths, and I'll just get a base reading of your thetan levels. Huh, that's, that's strange. What? Something, something's wrong. Brian, could you come over here a second? Yeah, oh, hey there, Greg. Stan. Will you look at his thetan levels? Huh, well... We'll get another e-meter. This one's obviously broken. Sorry about this, Greg. Mike, I need to talk to you. Excuse me, sir. I'll be right back. Are you all right? You're sweating. Take a look at this. The e-meter results from the little boy in room D. This... this can't be right. We ran the test four times. We used four different e-meters. Fax these results to the head office in Los Angeles. The president has to see this right away. Go! Now! <laughs> the boy is from a small mountain town in Colorado, sir. Sir, how can it be that a first-timer scores that kind of thetan level? He registered OT9. I'm only OT7, and I've been in the church all my life. I've waited 42 years for this day. Sir, don't you all see what this means? There was only one person who ever registered OT9 in the history of our church. Oh, Ron Hubbard. Okay, so I have to jump in here. The, the aspect of this that they're getting right is that OT8 is the highest level that has been released and that is available for anyone in Scientology to do. And Scientologists do believe that before L. Ron Hubbard died, he finished researching and compiling at least OT9 through 15 and uh, uh, gifted those to management uh, for safekeeping until they were ready to be released to Scientologists. So therefore, it, it is accurate as Scientologists would say that the only person who would ever have done OT9 or 10 or above is L. Ron Hubbard. And the other thing they're sort of getting right is that the highest echelons of Scientology management were told that L. Ron Hubbard would be coming back about 21 years or so after 
he passed away. Now what's crazy is that the rest of Scientology, Scientologists in the world were not told that. In fact, my entire time growing up in Scientology, working for Scientology, I never expected L. Ron Hubbard to come back. In fact, it was my understanding that he specifically said that he wasn't. So it's weird, but, but we see they're even getting this part right, that there are people who thought he was coming back and that L. Ron Hubbard would be the only one to ever uh, have done OT9. The E-meter does not measure Thetan levels. That's not a thing. I already said that earlier, but uh, just to repeat. But said he had lived past lives, that when he died, his Thetan would show itself again. Our prophet has returned. Uh, Stanley, take the garbage out before you go to bed. Ah, stupid, dumb garbage. There he is! <laughs> Thank you for returning! He's wonderful. He's wonderful. Hello, young man. I'm the head of Scientology. It is a great honor to meet you. All right, what the hell is going on here? We've been looking for your son for a long time, Mr. Marsh. He is the reincarnation of our church's most sacred prophet. Oh my God, it's John Travolta. Is this where he lives? Is this where L. Ron Hubbard is? Oh my God! Yes, John Travolta and Tom Cruise are big Scientologists. Do you believe me now? Young man, I know you don't remember it, but your name was L. Ron Hubbard. You revealed a secret which began the whole Church of Scientology. Okay, Stan, it's late. Go up to your room and get ready for bed. Let Mommy and Daddy handle this. Jesus Christ. L. Ron? L. Ron! It really is you! Oh, this is the greatest day of my life. Ah, uh, dude, I need to go to bed. Don't you understand, Alron? It's me, Tom Cruise. Yeah, I know who you are. Well, haven't I done well, Alron? Haven't you enjoyed my acting? Which film did you like best? You're not like as good as Leonardo DiCaprio, but you're okay, I guess. You're not Gene Hackman or that guy that played Napoleon Dynamite, but you're okay. I'm a failure in the eyes of the prophet. Ah! Hey! Dude, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. Go away! Dad! Tom Cruise won't come out of the closet. Mr. Cruise, come out of the closet. No. Come on, Mr. Cruise, this is ridiculous. I'm never coming out. What's going on? Tom Cruise won't come out of the closet. Tom Cruise, this is Park County Police. Please come out of the closet. Everybody here just wants you to come out of the closet, Tom. Please understand, we just want what is best for your son. The reincarnation of L. Ron Hubbard must be taken care of. Wasn't L. Ron Hubbard a science fiction writer? Yes, but he was also a prophet who knew the secret truth about the nature of life. This is just too much. We want to reveal to Stan the great secret of life behind our church, the safely guarded Scientology doctrine. All right, go ahead and tell him. Would you excuse us, please? This is highly classified church information. Oh, rats. You see, Stan, there is a reason for people feeling sad and depressed. An alien reason. It all began 75 million years ago. Back then, there was a galactic federation of planets, which was ruled over by the evil Lord Xenu. Xenu <laughs> thought his galaxy was overpopulated, and so he rounded up countless aliens from all different planets, and then had those aliens frozen. <laughs> The frozen alien bodies were loaded onto Xenu's galactic cruisers, which looked like DC-8s, except with rocket engines. The cruisers then took the frozen alien bodies to our planet, Earth, and dumped them into the volcanoes of Hawaii. The aliens were no longer frozen, they were dead. The souls of those aliens, however, lived on and all floated up towards the sky. But the evil Lord Xenu had prepared for this. Oh, 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 oh. Xenu didn't want their souls to return, and so he built giant soul catchers in the sky. <laughs> the souls were taken to a huge soul brainwashing facility, which Xenu had also built on Earth. There, the souls were forced to watch days of brainwashing material, which tricked them into believing a false reality. Xenu then released the alien souls, which roamed the Earth aimlessly in a fog of confusion. At the dawn of man, the souls finally found bodies which they could grab onto. They attach themselves to all mankind, which still to this day causes all our fears, our confusions, and our problems. L. Ron Hubbard did an amazing thing telling the world this incredible truth. Now all we're asking you to do is pick up where he left off.
but I don't know any of this stuff. Neither did Elrond when he started. He said he just closed his eyes and wrote down whatever came to mind. You can do the same. Just let it flow. Okay, I'll try. I just wish I could write my room, but Tom Cruise won't come out of the closet. I know. We've sent Nicole Kidman up there to see if she can help. <laughs> so that is remarkably accurate. Uh, that statement about L. Ron Hubbard saying he just closed his eyes and writes everything down, that's not something Scientologists believe about L. Ron Hubbard. Scientologists actually believe, uh, because Hubbard claimed, that everything he wrote was the result of exhaustive and comprehensive uh, scientific-like research. Tom, it's Nicole. It's time for you to come out of the closet. I'm not going to think any differently of you. Katie's not going to think any differently of you. You don't need to be in that closet anymore, Tom. Come out of the closet, Tom. You're not fooling anyone. Tom! Hey, Tom, it's John Travolta. Tom, you gotta come out of the closet. Oh, my God. Okay, it's like, if you don't come out, can I at least come in and talk to you? Okay, but no tricks. Tom, it now appears that John Travolta is also in the closet, and he refuses to come out. Yes. Yeah, so this is great, Stan. I wrote that, um, our followers shouldn't fly in DC-8s anymore because they're too much like Xenu's evil cruisers. Yes, of course. It's so wonderful. And I wrote that the evil Lord Xenu has recently broken out of galactic jail. Yes, of course. And best of all, I wrote that all the Scientologists should no longer have to pay money to belong. What? I realize that to really be a church, we can't charge people for help. What are you, stupid? Then how do we make money from those people? Well, it's not about the money, it's about the message, right? Wait a minute, whoa, whoa! You don't actually believe this crap, do you? Dummy! Brainwashed alien souls? E-meters and thetan levels? Those people out there buy that crap, but I thought you were smart enough to see what was really going on! But you said that there What's better than telling people a stupid story and having them believe you? Having them pay you for it, stupid! But then, why me? Why do you need me to write something so badly? Because if those people all think you're the reincarnation of L. Ron Hubbard, then they'll all buy your new writings, and you and I together will make three million dollars! Three million dollars? That's how a scam works! But this is a scam on a global scale! Do you fucking get me now? Yeah. Yeah, I get you. Then keep writing, Elrond. Your people are waiting. My fellow Scientologists, our prophet has finished his new doctrine and will now read some passages before making it available to you all for a nominal fee. I give you the reincarnation of Elrond Hubbard. Uh, thanks. So first of all, I've written that the brainwashed alien ghosts are actually from a galaxy called Nubunan. Oh, oh Nubunan. And, uh, uh, I, I can't do this. Oh, what? Look, everybody, we're all looking for answers, you know? We all want to understand who we are and where we come from, but... Sometimes we want to know the answer so badly that we believe just about anything. Huh? What? I'm not the reincarnation of L. Ron Hubbard. And Scientology is just a big, fat global scam. Oh, we are gonna sue you! What? Yeah, you think you can say our religion is a lie? We'll sue you, buddy! You told me it was a lie! Oh, now you're putting words in my mouth! You are so sued! You can't make fun of Scientology, kid. We are gonna sue your ass and your balls. Yeah, yeah, that's right! How dare you mock our faith, you little punk. You'll be hearing from our lawyers tomorrow. We've just had an incredible development here, Mitch. Tom Cruise, John Travolta, and R. Kelly have all come out of the closet. So you're not the prophet, huh? You made me look stupid. I'm gonna sue you, too. Well, fine. Go ahead and sue me. I will. I'll sue you in England. You are so sued, kid. Well, go on, then. Sue me. We're going to. Okay, good. Do it. I'm not scared of you. Sue me. Oh, it's such a masterful job of trolling Scientology. This episode of South Park was a huge deal 
within Scientology. This was the first time that the confidential material was put out into popular culture in this way. It's not the first time that the OT level material had been leaked publicly. It's not even the first time that the media uh, put it out into the world. It's the first time it was put out in this way uh, into pop culture. And even though Scientology uh, used legal threats to try to get this episode pulled in the first place, to try to prevent it from re-airing. Scientology never actually filed any lawsuits. And I did a video recently explaining why Scientology can't actually sue people anymore. And they didn't sue Comedy Central. They didn't sue Trey Parker or Matt Stone. And that's another reason why this episode was a real game changer for Scientology. These guys really put their necks out there and uh, mocked and ridiculed Scientology in a way that really had not been done before and showed that there really isn't much Scientology can do about it. They can throw tantrums, they can use all sorts of threats, but at the end of the day, there were no meaningful consequences for Trey Parker, Matt Stone, uh, Comedy Central, and, and it showed the world that Scientology is in some respects uh, a paper tiger. And perhaps they are not quite as scary and threatening as men and, and menacing as they would like the world to believe that they are. Because make no mistake, Scientology wants everyone to be very, very afraid of them. Trey Parker and Matt Stone showed the world that you don't have to be. All right, that's all I have on this for now. Thank you everyone for watching. Hopefully I can upload this and uh, it'll be available for viewing today, but we'll see. Thanks again, guys. Thanks to all of you who watched until the very end and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Okay, if you wanna see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you wanna see a, a different one of my videos, uh, oh, yeah, then you could click what's inside here if you have subscribed or not subscribe right here Bye.